In most card games, there are three main archetypes, and that's control, mid-range, and aggro. And within these archetypes are different branches of playstyles that give each deck their own personalities. Today, we will be discussing the art of playing aggressive decks, otherwise known as aggro decks. I've been a master of aggro decks in many card games. One of the things I love about these decks is that they don't allow the meta to play too slow to a point where games drag for too long and people build decks with too many late game cards that can dominate the board. It provides balance to the game and prevents control slash defensive decks to dominate the meta completely. For me, there are three main types of aggro decks. Hyper aggro being the greediest and the fastest of the three. Aggro being the fast but not so greedy. And Midgro being the slowest of the three but has the better tools to win against aggro mirror match and to not get totally dominated by mid-range decks. Nevertheless, the goal of an aggro deck is to aggressively finish the game as fast as you can before the opponent gets to a certain turn where they get their cards that can board wipe or power spike. Learning how to play aggro decks is the easiest out of the three main archetypes. Mastering it, on the other hand, can be argued as the hardest. Now, I'm about to discuss the main three types of aggro decks in detail, and also give extra advanced tips and tricks towards the end of the video. So what are we waiting for? Let's get on with it! Alright, let's talk about aggro splice in the meta really quick. Aggro kinda got pushed out of the meta due to the sheer amount of steel decks that are being played. Aggro is really weak against steel decks since they have a lot of pingers. And also with Lorcanus, Shift and Sing mechanic, this basically puts it in steroids. Grab your swords, it's just too much to handle. This is also one of the reasons why bounce control is so dominant. In a healthy meta, you need to have rock, paper, scissors in order to prevent one deck from dominating the meta. Since aggro is super rare in the competitive scene, Ruby Amethyst control just became so dominant and comfortable. In set 3 though, everything is changing. Aggro finally got some tools to deal with steel. Bear Necessities and Ursula are definitely a great addition to the set. Now, before we get into the sub archetypes of aggro, I want to talk about the fundamentals and the mindset you need to have as an aggro player. As an aggro player, you need to always set your mind into finishing the game as fast as possible. The longer the game goes, the lower your chances of winning. Remember as well that the critical moments of aggro are when to trade and when to quest. It's actually really rare that we trade against the opponent's board. As much as possible, you want to let them do the trading. Always count and calculate as well how much floor you can get one, two turns ahead. Or at least try to predict it based on what your opponents will play. Lastly, always remember that one to two draw cards is usually enough. All right, first, we're gonna talk about hyper aggro. Hyper aggro is the fastest type of aggro out of all the aggro decks that we're gonna talk about today. So usually you have a bunch of one and two costs and you guessed it right, from the word hyper, you wanna play as hyper as you can, meaning you're playing multiple cards in every turn. Well, except for turn one, obviously. So turn two, if you can play two one cost card, that should be the play that you, you should be doing. You, you need to push as fast as you can. Hyper aggro as well is the fastest deck that runs out of fuel fast because you're, you're just dumping a bunch of cards at the same time or at the same turn and trying to quest as much as possible. You, you wanna end the game, if possible, at turn four, but usually it's around turn five or six that you get to finish the game. Triple A aggro or Amethyst Amber aggro is basically the best example that, that we can have because this is the one that played a lot during set two and the one that found a lot of success compared to other hyper aggros. The, the, the Ruby Amethyst aggro is just aggro. It, it, it kind of looks the same as this, but it's not as hyper as this one. 
There are many different versions of this. This one has Hades. This is my old list. I eventually took out Hades, but for the most part, around turn four, turn five, you're, 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 you're trying to finish the game. You're not trying to draw with Hades anymore. So as you can see, we have Valilo and Maleficent, which are the best cards that you should play on turn one because they can quest for two and you have Simba to protect them. So uh, turn one, you, you'll you probably play Lilo. Uh, Pascal is more of a backup. You probably want to play Lilo or Maleficent. And then at turn two, if they didn't play anything on turn one, then you need to play another Lilo and Maleficent if possible. Otherwise, you're going to play uh, Simba. And Lefo is, is not really uh, the best choice. It's more of a, a backup in, in, in this deck. And this is, like what I said, this is my old version of the list. I eventually refined it. And you can play Madame Mim as well. It, it really depends. Madame Mim is, is played more if you are playing against another aggro deck. If, if it's a mirror match or you're playing against another aggro deck, Madame Mim is usually great at turn two because Madame Mim can take out a lot of their cards. You, you can play in the defense as well as push on turn three and play possibly a Pinocchio with another Lilo or 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 Arthur. Or, or, or there's a lot of other choices. And same thing with Madame Mim Fox. This is, these are more like backup cards to, to make sure that you don't lose to, to aggro, but also it can be used as an aggro tool because you can return back your one cost cards and then you can replay them again and now they're not exerted, they're not getting attacked. Rapunzel and Merlin Rabbit here are more of a, of a backup uh, for extra draw and friends on the other side as well. Like what I said, uh, I, uh, I previously mentioned that you don't want to really draw unless you have to. One or two turns of draw as a as an aggro deck in general, especially in hyper aggros, should be enough. W one preferably for for hyper aggro. But th that's about it. You you play as fast as you can. Do power plays. Power plays is a term that I use when I play multiple cards in one turn. Do as many power plays as you can in every turn and just quest as much as you can. That, that's basically it. Don't trade unless you really have to. The only time you really trade is if you're playing against a mirror match and the opponent is playing an aggro deck as well. But for the most part, let the opponent do the trading for you. Let your characters quest and let them do the trades. The first one is the hyper aggro. That's the fastest. This is not slow. This is still fast, but it plays a little different than hyper aggro. So in hyper aggro, you do a lot of power plays. Remember what, uh, what I said about power plays? You play multiple cards every turn. With aggro, you play more of what's the best card for that curve. So for example, turn one, you have to choose between Lilo and Curse Merfolk. You have to play Curse Merfolk because Curse Merfolk, if they attack this, they get to they have to discard a card, right? And on turn two, you have Simba, Flynn, Ursula, and Wendy Darling. You can play Ursula right away just to play it safe so they can't play grab your swords. But also, Simba is, is a great card to protect your Cursed Merfolk. So they don't uh, get to kill the Cursed Merfolk, which can quest for two. And Simba can only quest for one, and you don't really care if Simba dies. But Flynn Rider is also a great, great play. If you have Flynn, you play Flynn first over Wendy. Because... Flynn, even though he has one less willpower, when he gets attacked, your opponent discards a card. So now you're getting the idea. So at turn three, if you have just in time or Balu, you definitely have to play just in time if you have a five cost card. That way you get an ultra megatonic power spike right away on turn three. So you, you basically get the idea. It's still really fast, but this time you're not playing multiple cards in one turn. You're playing... What is the best card that you can play on that curve, right? On that turn. And don't get me wrong. You still want to find spots where you can power play and play multiple cards if you can. But for the most part, you're playing on curve. And the goal still doesn't change. You're still trying to push as fast as you can. All right. Now let's talk about mid -grow. Mid-grow is a combination of aggro and mid-range. It has both of its aspects. It, it, it has the, the aggro that we just talked about, where you play the best cards on your curve, um, and you also have a mid-range aspect to it, where 
The cards are much thicker, but usually it's much slower than than aggro compared to aggro. It's much slower, but you have more pl flexibility. You don't auto lose against mid range decks. You have a lot of tools to actually survive their attacks. So one of your cards, like for example, Tiana or the Prince, they can actually survive multiple attacks before they before they die, which means you get to keep more cards in the board and you can you get to keep on questing every turn. Like what I said, this deck is much thicker than aggro. It's still fast, but it's also slower compared to the other two aggros that we just talked about. This, this, this deck, though, has a lot of tools compared to the other, the other decks. The other decks is more of like, all right, let's, you, let's put the, the pedal to the metal, I believe is what they say, and go as fast as we can. Here, you kind of have to make a little bit more decisions. You can actually do some trades as much as possible. Aggro is still above the, the, the mid-range part of it, so you still have to, to, to go as fast as you can. But you also have to think now, okay, I can actually afford to trade. And if, if I trade this turn, I get to build a better tempo and my other characters that are pushing so fast are much safer. And now I have more cards in the, uh, the, compared to my, my opponent. And with those, I can finish faster and much better. But for, for the most part, mid -grow is still aggro. It's just a little slower than the, compared to the other two, but has more tools. All right, as promised, I'm going to give you advanced tips and tricks for becoming a great aggro player. I've been playing aggro for so long now with multiple games, and I have so much success in, in, in those games. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you right now when, when it comes to building aggro decks is, like what I mentioned before, have that mindset of finishing the game as fast as you can. And I know I repeated that a bunch of times, but I have to repeat it again because there are a lot of times where you're going to be like, okay, Tinkerbell is such a great card. I really, really want to play Tinkerbell here. Um, there's a lot of other cards that are just super, super good too. Like, grab your swords, grab your swords, it's just, it's just so good. And I really, really want to play grab your swords in, in, in this deck. You need to get that mindset out of, out of your head, and you need to learn what aggro and playing aggro means. And playing aggro means is you have to finish the game as fast as you can. And I know if you look at Lilo versus Hook, a lot of the times you would want to pick Hook right if you're if you're building a deck but aggro doesn't follow the 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 value mindset of most mid-range and control players or building a control or mid-range deck it, it it doesn't follow that it has its own complete rule set there are a bunch of cards that are good both in mid-range and control but there are there there are a bunch of cards that's only good for aggro like those cards, you're not gonna run in in any other card. Like Lilo and Maleficent, you are not gonna run that in a regular, a regular mid range or or control deck. It's very rare that you will even consider those cards in. So, have that mindset that I'm gonna play a card that can quest the most per turn, and preferably one that has good survivability and can quest at least twice when I play it. That's the mindset that you need to have when building an aggro deck. Now, my second, my second advice is be a scout, be a spy, right? Sun Tzu right here has taught me that spying is, 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 is an essential part of Art of War. And by that, I mean, go online, look at the meta decks, look at what people are, people are playing and build around that. As, a, as, as an aggro, a, aggro player, let's say that, okay, if I play this on turn two or turn three, can this survive this or can this survive that? W what would be a great card? So even if this attacks, I would still be able to quest as much as I, I, I can. Have that mindset of always looking at meta and learning what, what cards 
your opponent would possibly play on turn two, turn three, turn four, or even turn one, you know, and so on and so forth. You don't usually scout the turn, the turn sevens and turn eights and turn nine. Those are irrelevant when playing aggro because if you're still playing the game at turn seven, a lot of the times, if you're not around 18 or 19 lore, you're most likely going to lose. You don't want to want to reach turn seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth. You want to finish the game by turn five or six, if possible, or at the most, turn seven. It, it, like what I said, the longer the game goes, the lower your chances of winning. So those are basically my two ultra megatonic tips and tricks for you guys when it comes to building your 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 knowledge and your skills and your deck building skills as an aggro player. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you learned something from it, please smash that subscribe button and the follow follow button. No, no, we're in YouTube now. Sm smash the subscribe and the bell button and also the like button and don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions or if if you have any thoughts about this this type of a uh, play style in general or just leave an emoji because it helps other than that i'll see you guys on the next tutorial peace